Good evening. Let's stand together. We're going to sing. Strength will rise when we wait on the Lord. Let's put our hands together. Here we go. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord our God. this course once more. You are the everlasting God. Sing that the Lord. The everlasting God. You do not faint. You won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort in me you lift us up on wings like eagles Father we love you thank you so much for sending your son Jesus Christ to come and die for us Lord your word reminds us that while we are yet sinners while we are still powerless you send him to die for us so, Father, we come today with grateful hearts. We are grateful that we are alive. And thank you, dear God, those of us who believe we have abundant life. Mm -hmm. And I pray for those who don't believe or don't know tonight, they'll have a clear opportunity to know what life is in Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear God, for Olive Baptist Church, where we are a people gathered to worship you with the mission of reaching Pensacola for you. Be glorified today. And thank you, dear God, that we can gather in this way to pray for a great weekend that's ahead of us. I pray, dear God, that we will share the link to hope, and that is Jesus Christ. Bless your name tonight, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, thank you, my friend. Let's sing this together. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee thou changest not thy compassions they fail not as thou hast been thou forever wilt be Sing 
summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for to tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand besides. Sing this out. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I Lord, unto me. Sing it again. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faith. Great is that faith. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Been learning this. Sing along with him. Father of kindness, you have poured out grace. You brought me from the ashes. You have filled me with peace. Giver of mercy, you're my help in time of need. Lord, I can't help but see. Faithful you are, faithful forever you will be, faithful you are, all your promises are yes and amen, singing all your promises. All your promises are yes and amen. amen. Beautiful Savior, you have brought me near. Pull me from the ashes, you have broken every Blessed Redeemer, you have set this captive free. Lord, I can't help but see. Sing it, your faith.
promises. The next part goes like this. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. Sing it. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. Sing it out. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness.
Praise the Lord. Thank you, John. Yeah. You know, the Word of God says a lot about uh, the Word of our testimony. You can be seated. And tonight, I want to share a testimony uh, with you. Uh, you hear me say every now and again that uh, I have the joy of working with FCA at the University of Alabama and uh, serve on their board there. Gary Kramer is our uh, director. And so we have a couple of meetings a year, different times, things that we do. And uh, several months ago, Brother Gary and I were uh, talking, and uh, he began to tell me about uh, a young man that had come to faith in Christ and was an Olympic swimmer and was really having impact. And, and uh, I said, well, tell me about him. And so he shared with me, he said he was from South Africa. And I said, well, we have a gentleman on our staff that is from South Africa. And, uh, he said, well, maybe they could connect, know each other a little bit. And so uh, I put Sean and uh, Chris Reed together and talked. And so he drove down for the weekend uh, just for fellowship. And uh, he's got uh, a story that I want you to hear uh, tonight and then just talk a little bit about uh, reaching college students. And then we're going to divvy up here in small groups of four or five, and we're going to pray over Belong weekend. All right? So... Uh, Chris, welcome to Ollie, friend. How are you doing tonight? Thank you. I'm doing well. Good. Amen. Glad to have you here. And uh, now some of these people won't like this, but this, I, I hadn't heard you say this. Yet, so just say Roll Tide in that accent one time. Roll Tide. Okay. <laughs> well, you got a little Southern drawl in there you know, on that. So that's good. Amen. Uh, tell me... Where are you from, just about your family and that kind of thing? Yeah, you know, you're one of three, middle child, I think you told me. So just tell me about your family a little. Tell us about your family. Yes, sir. So um, my name's Christopher Reed, Christopher Patrick Reed. I'm from a small town in South Africa called Port Elizabeth. Um, it's on the southern coast just before the country starts curving up. Uh, it's home to some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Um, have lots of surf competitions and all that stuff there. Are you a surfer? I uh, try to be. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I came from an uh, Anglican background in South Africa. Spent my whole life, I was christened as an Anglican and went through the church knowing God um, or knowing about God. Um, it's my mother and my father. Uh, my father was Daryl Reed. My mother's Mar Maria Ronell. I got two sisters. Uh, eldest is Rain Reed. She's just completed a doctorate. Uh, then I'm in the middle. I'm 23. My eldest is 29. And then I got my youngest sister, Hannah. She's 19, just started university. So, yeah, that's my family in a little nutshell. <laughs> so, swimming. How, when did you begin to swim? Yeah. Growing up in some of the most beautiful beaches in the world, I'd always been in the, in the ocean, whether it was surfing or fishing. And so water's always been part of my life. And it wasn't until about the second grade, uh, a teacher came up and after watching the normal uh, physical um, lessons. She's like, you know, you'd be really good at swimming one day. So 
So like, okay, we'll, we'll try out. And um, that was at the age of eight when I got some professional lessons. And um, kind of that's where the journey of my life started. Um, God has blessed me with a phenomenal talent in swimming. I've been able to travel the world, learn a lot about other cultures, and then it also brought me to the United States. Okay, uh, so you, you wound up, you had several athletic scholarship offers, but you wound up in Tuscaloosa. How did that happen? Yes, yeah, so, so um, well, in 2014, uh, my father passed away from cancer. Mm. Um, and it, it left our family in a, a pretty tough situation. And kind of midway through the year, um, as I was battling with my relationship with God, I kind of felt Him calling me to come to the United States. So having the, um, the friends that I had, they sent out my, my times and sent it out, out to a whole bunch of scouts. I had the likes of Michigan, Arizona, Florida, all great, great schools that offer me um, 100% scholarship rights, but uh, Alabama was on my heart for some reason. Um, you know, when I first got the email from them, I didn't even read it. I deleted it immediately because I was like, where's Alabama? Um, <laughs> but, you know, just through a series of events and God's conviction, ended up choosing Alabama. I mean, even the thought of going to other universities or trying to go there made me sick to the stomach. And kind of where I was at with God and kind of what, it hap what was happening in my life is, you know, I felt like God was calling me to go to Alabama to achieve something great. Um, I just thought it was swimming. <laughs> okay. And you had some real anger in your heart. You told me over dinner, we were talking last night about your dad and the death. And how were you feeling toward the Lord about that? Yeah. So in 2013, my father was diagnosed with cancer. He had colon and liver cancer. And kind of the God I knew was, you know, if I'd go down on prayer and ask him every day, he'd make that miracle happen. Unfortunately, a whole year, exactly a whole year later, he passed. And not only was our family without a husband and out a father, but for me, not only was I fatherless, but I had answered prayer. And I couldn't understand why God did not do what I wanted for myself. Hmm. And, um, you, know, it, you know, it was a, a very tough time for me. I was 18 I was years of age. Um, I was mad at the world. I was mad at God because, you know, I'd lost my father, who I'd loved dearly. And just as, as my life went on, I thought that I could be dependent and self-sufficient on myself. And, you know, I was harbored that I harbored huge resentment towards God for um, two and a half years um, until I started my walk with Christ again one day. Tell me how that began to happen and uh, how, how that transition came uh, of, of knowing the Lord and uh, just coming to salvation and understanding that. Yeah. Um, you know, year after my father's passing, arrived in Tuscaloosa and, you know, great training facilities and whatnot, but also college was out there and I had, you know, the green grass of college and um, ultimately I indulged in a lifestyle that wasn't, um, wasn't good for me. And, you know, kind of the backlog for me going to Alabama was when my father was struggling with cancer, he had, he had three wishes for his family, for his, his children. and. Uh, one of his wishes was for my, elder, uh, my sister, Rain, to get a doctorate, for me to go to the Olympic Games, for him to see me go to the Olympic Games, and for him to see my younger sister uh, represent South Africa in water polo. So once he'd passed, all three of us kind of really took that on our heart to achieve that for him. Even though he wasn't here on earth, we knew he'd be watching in heaven. Yeah. Um, so the move to Alabama was really to go and uh, compete and train for my father in hope of making the Olympic Games. Uh, pr very tough time coming to Alabama. Being a foreign athlete in the United States is not easy. Struggled with it daily, I still sometimes struggle. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until um, I came back to South Africa to qualify for the Olympics and I just did the unthinkable. 
I, um, at the age of 20, I placed fifth in the world at that time, rank, world rankings. I um, made the Olympic team and I became the fastest African in history. And these were all phenomenal achievements, um, which I'd later on go to the Olympic Games and finish 10th as a 20-year-old in a, a field of veterans. But the thing was, is even though I'd you know, achieved my father's wish, I didn't really achieve my own. Mm. You know, my own wish was to bring as much glory and honor to, to my father's wish, but also to myself, to make me feel better about what is going on in my life. So coming back from the Olympic Games, you know, all that stuff's gone. I'm no longer the superstar athlete, you know, starting the next four years. And I just, I just had an identity crisis because who I was, I wasn't invested in anything greater than myself. Um, I was invested in my idol, my swimming. And so you're 10th in the world, but you're empty. And something got your attention in the middle of that. What happened in that regard? Yeah, I mean, yeah, people looked at me and they thought, oh, wow, he's got it all, but I didn't. And it was really when I came back, I was, I was looking for something. I had no idea what, but I was soul searching. And it was when God put people in my life that ultimately drew me closer to him. It was the fruits of their spirit and how they lived their life that I'd look at these people and I'd say, wow, you have something that I desperately want. Um, and I, I need that. I know I need that, but I don't know what it is. You said that to them, I think, did you not? I did. I yeah. sat down. It was um, actually my, at the time, girlfriend's grandparents. Um, sat down with them and I just said, you know, I love you guys, you know. I've, met, I've known you guys for four months, but I'm absolutely in love with you, and you've been so kind, and help me. Help me, help me, help me, please. So, um, so did they share Christ with you and, uh, verbally after that? How did that happen? Yeah, I mean, they, they, they shared Christ with me verbally. Um, first off, I, they really helped me move on from my father's passing. I mean, my mother has been great, my family has been great, but you know, it's got to come from yourself. Hmm. And kind of they gave me some tools, they spoke to me, and, um, you know, they provided me with the resources that I needed. They got me a pretty elaborate study guide, uh, Bible, and regularly I would talk with them on the phone. Um, but, you know, ultimately they could give me as much guidance what they want, and they could tell me anything that they want. End of the day, it's, I have to have a receiving heart to hear what they're saying. You bet. But at the same time, I actually had to take the initiative and dive into the Word daily, you know, because if I were to know God and understand kind of what had happened in my life and what He's going to do in my life, I need to talk to Him and I need to hear what He has to say to me. So it was a daily sacrifice, um, realizing that the life that I was living, it's not a, it's not a god honoring or not a Christ-centered life. And it is through their help, my friends, my coaches, someone like Gary Kramer too, um, they ultimately drew me closer to the Lord. So how, how did FCA fit into your life? How, where did that come from? How, how did you get involved with them? Did you know what FCA was before you came to the States? I had no idea what it was at all. Okay. Um, you know, it was just during this, this, uh, this journey that I had, I was always kind of scared to go to FCA because, you know, I knew there was a whole bunch of people that are on the ball. They knew a lot about God. I didn't know a lot. Um, and it was just like, I mean, the, those people, though, you know, I always knew that if I wanted to address them with a spiritual issue, I knew I could go there. Um, and it was, took a lot of courage for me. It wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just a slow process of me opening up to these individuals because FCA has always been there and it was really until I met someone who was able to relate to me on that personal level because I think and nowadays um, as someone of my age I feel like a lot of us don't know much it's kind of in the past you know if you get told this you need to believe that and move on yeah and there wasn't really a guiding hand in the past 
And it was really until I found someone who could not only relate to me and understand, but also be uh, an ear. And um, just taking the time to baby me <laughs> through the process and reading and the gospel and what, what, who Jesus is. So now you're, you're doing training for the Olympics that are coming up, and that's in Tokyo when? Uh, it's next year, July. 2020. 2020 in Tokyo, Japan. Okay. Uh, so wh what do you do when you work out? What's your event? What do you swim? So my, my event, my special, my, the event I specialize in is the 100 meter backstroke. It's two laps in an Olympic size pool. Okay. Um, I do other events, but that's my bread and butter. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, my training really looks like, I mean, I train uh, 20 hours a week in swimming. Outside of that, I'll probably have five hours in the weight room or conditioning outside of the pool. And then I'll probably have a lot more, probably about 10 hours collectively during the week with uh, recovery, uh, stretching, and just caring for myself. Eating right. Eating right, mm -hmm. sleeping. You're a cook. Yeah, I love cooking. Yeah. Um, I absolutely love it because I believe that, you know, this body is a temple. All of our bodies are a temple. Um, and you need to treat it as such. Yes, so sir. I carefully um, watch what I eat. Um, I, you know, I try to limit as much or as little processed food in my diet. Um, it sucks because, you know, fast food tastes pretty good. <laughs> but um, I was just, you know, wanting to have that lifestyle that is congruent with what I'm trying to achieve sure. in life. Okay, backstroke, down and back, what's the world record? Uh, it's a 5180. 5180. Yes, What's sir. the best you've ever done? I've done a 5311. 5311. Yes, Who's sir. the world record holder now? You know, uh, Ryan Murphy, an American from uh, Jacksonville. From Jacksonville, yeah. Florida. Jacksonville, yes. So you're <laughs> after him, huh? Yeah. Well, he's, he's a mass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Will he swim in 2020? Uh, yeah, he plans on. Okay. Good deal. So you do all that training for 51 seconds. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like the Christian life, you know. You, you got to dig in in order to run the race. And it's what the Word of God uh, tells us. But it, you're, you're doing that, but you're also working with FCA now at, at the University of Alabama and raising support, and getting ready to do this. So what do you do uh, and how do you find it best to reach college kids? We're having a deal a week from tomorrow night. How do we reach your generation? What do you think are some keys to doing that? Yeah. Well, at FCA, I'm coming on staff. What I'm, what I'm going to be responsible for is the international side of internet, um, FCA. It's a very new aspect. And given kind of what God has so generally blessed me with and I've been able to achieve in the sport, um, it's given me kind of this credibility with international athletes, not only swimmers, but all athletes. Okay. Um, so I, I'm going to be heading up the international side of FCA where, um, where we've been having international fellowship nights, um, just gathering that community and that family through getting to know these guys and intentionally being with them. Um, some of them, uh, some have been saved, um, as well partnering with the local churches, uh, really getting them connected with fellow countrymen. Uh, because, you know, it's one thing for them to have the Christ experience in America, when they go back, you know, I don't want it to be an experience in America. I want it, we, we want them to be saved and want it to continue. Be a kingdom just, experience. Yeah, yeah, kingdom experience, but also be disciples when they go back because we, want, we, 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 we always focus on sending people to go reach them, uh, reach uh, lost people across the world, but, you know, lost people coming to the United States to compete and to swim. Yeah. And, um, God has granted me such a great opportunity with my life event and what's going on at FCA to reach international athletes on campus. So you connect with them. The times I've been there for these internationals, they always eat, don't they? Yeah, so uh, food, it's always hot. Food's to the heart, you know. Yeah. Um, we, 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 um, we get... So the last time you were there, we had Hungarian nights. We right. had our, our six Hungarians get together. Kind of helps unite them. It's the goulash night, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I can't pronounce all those, that food, but anyway. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> and we, 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 they get together, they cook, they have fun. We right. get together, we eat. That's great. Um, and then we just, you know, indulge and celebrate who they are, but making a family out of it. Yeah. Um, so takes if, time as yeah. you work through that. You, you shared with me about, is, was the young man, was it a Chinese fella that you'd been sharing with who was an atheist? And uh, was he from China or elsewhere? Yes, so he was from China, Beijing. Yeah, tell me a little bit about him. Tell our people about, about that guy. You, you began to try to reach out to him with the gospel. How did that go? Yeah, um, so this, this guy, he came in, uh, he's from China, came, came in June to, to start his diving career. And, you know, I built a great relationship with him. We're very good friends. And he started in the fourth semester, he started taking some classes and he got put into a religious studies class. Which I don't think what he knew what that meant in English or in Chinese, <laughs> but he ended up in that class. And um, they, they had a lot of, they were going through all world religions and it came to Christianity and those just didn't make sense to him. So one day we we're just sitting down, having dinner, and then he just suddenly pipes up and he's like, Chris, why did God make woman from Adam's rib? And I was like, oh, okay, let's go. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I kind of, I explained to him, he looked me in the eye and he said, that's hogwash. Um, and I was like, all right. And for the next few months, he would, he would ask us a whole bunch of Old Testament questions of uh, why, did, why did Babel, why did God destroy Babel, or something like that. And then um, we'd always answer those questions, and that would always be enough, but he would always kind of hold on to that, uh, that central, I don't know, problem of it's, it doesn't make sense that a person came from a rib. And then just over Christmas, we, I, was, I was able to spend some time with him, and we just got down praying together. He joined me in prayer that evening. And then after we were done praying, he, he kind of looked at me and he said, you know, Chris, I, I, I trust God. It's like, you know, people tell me that when I drink Coke, straight Coke out of the can, it's really bad for my teeth because it'll rot my teeth. But they say if I put a straw in the can and then drink out of the straw, it saves my teeth. That's what God is. God's that straw. And I just need to have faith that that straw is going to be what everyone says it is. Um, so I was like, yeah, Kevin, I mean, you do you. Yeah, that makes sense, right? <laughs> so um, he's still growing because um, there's, there's a lot of barriers in English. Um, it's taking time and just, you know, we were able to get him a, a Chinese, and a, uh, not an ancient Chinese Bible, so he's diving into the word. Um, and it's just it's building that relationship and just establishing him and getting him plugged in with the community too. We have uh, lots of uh, Chinese students, international students coming in and, you know, they all have the common denominator of, you know, they have a life and faith here. Right. But we're trying to get them to the community and make sure that they are comfortable with going back and sharing that, their, their faith in a country that is so unwelcoming to yeah. Christians. Two more things I want you to answer for me. We're trying to reach our campus here. It's a much smaller venue, of course, than, than where you are. Uh, but nonetheless, it has all some of the same dynamics that, that you, you would find on any secular campus. Uh, what tools do you use? What, what are keys to touching those students? What, what works? How, how do we reach those kids? Yeah. I think the biggest thing is consistency in the way you live. Um, whether it's just inviting kids over to your house. I mean, you have to be very intentional about how you're inviting them and what's going on in your own life. But I think if you were just open, I mean, have these cookouts or go out and have these small groups. I think getting the kids in, and just like with me, I saw how someone lived their life and they were consistent in what they were saying, what they were doing, and what they will continue doing. And I think what the biggest thing is, you know, one of my friends, she said this the other day to me. She said, you know, some, some people have never read a Bible, but they're reading you right now. Hmm. And I think that's true to our whole life is if we're trying to be intentional about sharing our faith is yeah, we can say all the great things, but they, they're going to be watching us to see whether we're living it too. And I think living it out in front of them, 
and getting that trust, but also when those conversations do come up, I think the, 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 the biggest danger that we face as a society today is assumption, that we assume someone knows what we know. Or, and I think the, the best thing is walking them in, but also assuming that they know nothing. Take it from the beginning. Yes, sir. Because I certainly, I spent 18 years in the church, but I didn't know who Christ was. I missed him. Mm. And it wasn't until I started from the beginning that I started seeing who Christ really was. Amen. How can we pray for you in the work that you're going to be doing? How can these people pray for Chris Reed, Creed that we call you? Yeah, Creed. Um, just that God will um, continually bless me with these opportunities, um, that, that as I'm, I'm going out and being intentional about sharing my faith, that the Spirit just continually refreshes the hearts of those that I'm pouring my life into, and that they can just see the truth. Um, because, you know, these guys have come to America. You know, it's not by coincidence that they've come here and they yeah, come sure. to the campus. And um, they're open to a lot of things. Oftentimes, they aren't open to a life and faith. And I just pray that, and ask for prayers, is that they can, with this openness that they've come to America with, that they're open to hearing the word. But not only just hearing it, but wanting to adopt it for their own heart. Okay, amen. Well, next year, we're going to be watching when uh, especially the backstroke comes up. Yes, sir, thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> see, we'll be praying for you. And what's that other guy's name? Uh, Ryan Murphy. Okay, we're yeah. going to pray for Ryan to be <laughs> Amen. Well, it'd be great to see you on the podium, but I'm telling you, 10th in the world is not bad, my friend. And thank God. Take your... Uh, platform use it for the glory of god keep sharing jesus and uh, we'll be praying for you in days to come give chris a good hand wouldn't you thank you my friend god love you thanks for coming spending the weekend uh here with us